Hello guys, it's Ryan Ho, back with another video. Today I want to talk about the cleanest DAC amp combo you can get. This is the iFi Zen Signature Stack with the Zen DAC and the Zen Amp. Now, the thing I like about the setup is really kind of see how small this form factor is. It's an all metal build quality. It fits really well on your desk. It doesn't take up too much space. And even the connections on this thing, it use a Pentacon cable to connect it from the DAC to the amp, which is only one small cable versus the typical XLR, which are these bigger, chunkier ones, and you need two of those. This one just has one cable that does it all. And really, because of all that combined, I think it really makes a really nice clean setup for someone's desk. And the best part about it is it sounds really, really good. Now, the thing about this is this is the Hyphman edition, right? So these iFi devices have different amplifiers for different headphones because they have these built-in EQ functions. So for this one, I have the AT6 SCV2. It kind of helps, you know, make it sound a little bit better using EQ. You can, they have one for the HD650 or 6XX, and they also have one for the Mezzi 99. So if you have any of those headphones and you're interested in kind of a kind of EQ profile for that, then these will help it out. And we'll talk about the hi Man one in general because a lot of hi Man headphones have what they call a house signature or a house sound. So they all sound very similar with some slight deviations, right? So we'll talk about how that improves the sound quality. And as always, I want to thank iFi for sending this out to review. So it lets me kind of do this review for you guys. And yeah, anyways, let's get into the nitty gritty detail. All right, so we have the stack in front of us. So we have the DAC on top and the amp below. So the first thing is the all metal build quality. If you just look at this, it is kind of like a MacBook to me, honestly. It's built really well. It's solid and I really like it, especially the blue color because blue is one of my favorite colors. And the DAC is very simple. You basically have one knob. So this can be used in fixed or variable mode. So you can basically control the volume using the DAC if you wish, or you could just leave it to the amplifier. And yeah, that's about it, honestly. And if you take a look in the back, so we see the Pentacon cable, right? This one cable connects the top to the bottom. Then we have the variable fix, the RCA, the USB, and then just the power plug. If you notice something about the DAC, it actually doesn't even have a on and off button. Now I do wish it did actually have that, so I think you just have to unplug it to turn it off. But yeah, that's something to worth noting. Now we have the amplifier on the bottom. So the amplifier to me has, you know, a lot of functionality, right? So you can see we have the power, on and off we have the input which is three is the usb that i'm using we have the power match or how loud it gets honestly i haven't had a reason to go above zero to be honest because this thing puts out a lot of power so in fact this puts out 1.2 watts into 32 ohms in the balance mode and it puts 1.6 watts in the single ended it's actually funny because in balance it actually puts out less power at 32 ohms than the single ended which is like probably the only amplifier I know that does that. And I mean, it doesn't really make a difference in practical use cases because it's more than enough power for any headphone. Like I have the HE6 SCV2 right here. This is the most power hungry headphone out there and it plays fine on this. So it doesn't really make that big a difference, but it's just interesting fact to note. But at the highest impedances, then the balance actually does put out double the output of the single ended. So it does, you know, put out more power in that scenario. Now we move to the dial. Honestly, this volume dial is really big. It's very chunky. It's really nice. I've used amplifiers that had this too small, too thin. It was hard to reach for this one. You do not get that issue at all. And it's very smooth. Now we have the quarter inch plug for your headphone. And then we also have the Pentacon port for the balance input. And then we have the kind of the EQ setting slash X space, right? So X space essentially tries to mimic what speakers does. So it makes the sound kind of sound a little bit more in front of you, a little bit wider. And that's what it kind of seeks to create like speaker like effect. And then we have the hi man button or the EQ setting, right? So this one kind of fixes everything that hi man headphones are, you know, not so great at. So one of the things is a lot of open back headphones and they kind of roll off in the bass and sub bass. So adds more bass, adds more sub bass. So you get that kind of nice bass punch that you want. 
The other thing it does is a lot of high format headphones have the min range a little bit scooped out a little bit. So it makes vocalists or your mid range sound a little bit more distant, a little further away, less present. The high fan button brings it closer, brings it out a little bit more, and your vocalist sounds more in front of you, more closer, more realistic in my opinion, and better. So I really do like the aspect of this the best. And then the third thing it does is it kind of brings down the treble a little bit, not too much, because a lot of high fan headphones are known to be a little bright. So it kind of reduces the trouble a little bit to make it a little bit less fatiguing in the long run. So every single time I review a Hyphman headphone, I basically complain about those three things and this button basically fixes those three things. So that's really all you need to know, right? It does exactly what you want to do to fix the Hyphman kind of sound signature. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about is sound, right? So I did test the DAC and the amp independently and as well as together, but the DAC and the amp, honestly, these two are very clean sounding. Like my own like stack, my own kind of audio that I use every single day actually sounds smoother compared to this. And I actually do prefer the sound of the this DAC to that. And the reason why is I'm, I like audio, at least my gear, to be the most cleanest and clearest, the least kind of character added to it. And I found that mine was just a little bit more smoother than I would like actually. And so I do think, especially the DAC, is definitely something I'm very interested in. The amp as well sounds cleaner than my amp. My amp, I have a class A amp, but this is also a class A amp, but it does sound just a little bit smoother than it. So, you know, it's very interesting how that works, but, Altogether, I think this is a very clean, neutral type of sound. And really, I did compare it to their kind of cheaper option. This is the iFi Uno, it's $100. It has, you know, power match, EQ, and just single-ended. But you can definitely tell the difference in sound quality. Obviously, this is $100 and this is $600, so, you know, you better see an improvement. But I do think it's a big improvement over the $100 device. Things sound a little bit more, not even a little bit, honestly, they sound sharper, faster, more like the lines when you hear the separation of music is very kind of clean. Not to say the Uno isn't, but it's, you can definitely see the upgrade that you, you get from this kind of set. Now, one thing that's funny is the kind of EQ functions on the Uno, there's actually three of them and they're more general type of functions. So if you kind of want that with any headphone, then this would actually be better in that sense versus if you wanted, you know, an EQ function for your specific headphone, then the, you know, iFi Zen Can, I guess you would say, has better for the high man headphones because of that kind of tailored to their kind of sound signature, right? So in conclusion, without sounding too much like a fanboy, I do really like this iFi Zen stack. Honestly, for $600, this is pretty worth it. It comes with the Pentacon cable for free, essentially, because it's included if you buy the package. I think it's about $50 for that cable by itself. And, you know, I really do think the bill, the sound, the usability of this is really, really good. And, you know, it made me kind of regret kind of not buying this over my own setup, to be honest. Like, I feel like this has a really clean sound that I'm looking for and I really enjoy it. So, yeah. Anyways, if you guys found this video helpful, please like and subscribe down below. Help my videos out. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.